five. Tom Matz reporting from Parkland Hospital in Dallas, Texas. Today, the President of the United States, the 35th President of the United States, John F. Kennedy, met his death on the streets of Dallas, Texas. The weather and the constant announcements by radio and TV stations that the President would visit our fair city brought thousands and thousands of people to the airport. They also lined the route of the motorcade, lurking in the crowd of jubilant people on hand to bid a welcome to the President and his party was one assassin. Policemen, after four shots were fired, found three or four 30 30 caliber rifle bullets in the fifth floor office of a downtown building. The president was brought be behind the market hall, the scene of where he was supposed to speak. Some 2,660 people were gathered to have a luncheon and to listen to the president speak. These people were shocked and revolted some of the comments I heard as I left the building when the national press notified me of the, the deed were people were openly crying. Others were too shocked to believe it. Some just said, my God, my God, it can't happen here. I left Market Hall and came immediately to the hospital when I learned that they had the caravan had bypassed the market and come direct to the hospital. Moments after I arrived, I talked to a Father Hubert, who said he had administered the last rites to John F. Kennedy, and the president was dead. A few moments later, after confirmation of this, it was announced that Lyndon Baines Johnson would be flown in all probability to the nation's capital, where he'd be sworn in later as the 36th president of the United States. Mr. Johnson was taken from the building under a heavy security guard. Six Secret Service men put him into an automobile and moved away from the building. Even the direction is unknown due to the large crowd of people outside the building at this time. Thousands of people, some openly weeping outside the building, on the lawn, the sidewalk, even blocking the traffic on the streets around Parkland Hospital. Another death occurred just a few moments ago. We were notified that the Secret Service man riding on the back of the president's open convertible also died of a bullet wound. I talked to Senator Ralph Yarborough. He was too stunned, really to say anything. His feelings gave, gave way to an open burst of tears. There's been no message as to the whereabouts of the wife of the president, the wife of Governor John Conley, or the wife of the vice president. John Conley, 47 years old, has been reported on the operating table. Bill Stinson, the administrative assistant to the governor, said that his pulse was normal his blood pressure was good. He is now undergoing chest surgery. A series of x-rays were taken to let the doctors know how bad the damage was inside his chest from the bullet wound itself. As I said earlier, thousands of people openly and unashamedly crying surrounding Parkland Hospital here in Dallas. Some of the comments were, my God, it can't happen here. We're living in the 20th century. This thing doesn't happen anymore. And others openly staying as soon as I can sell my property, I'm getting as far away from the city of Dallas and the state of Texas as I possibly can. Tom Matz reporting, KVIL Radio Dallas.